Rick dropping in on you. I hope that everybody is blessed. I hope that the things that you are aspiring to do in your life individually as families, communities are thriving. I'm coming to you because there's work to be done in the community. There is so many things that are teetering on the edge of total calamity. And we are operating as if we are completely oblivious to these realities, the spike in suicide, the growth in crime rates, the um, male, female gender wars between black men and black women, the complete uh, collapse of the public education system right before our eyes. Uh, political calamity and so much more. We are in a worse situation now than we were 50 years ago. They just have more ways of distracting us and convincing us that we're not. Those of us that seem to be doing okay from a socioeconomic perspective have disconnected from the whole notion or idea of what's really truly happening to us as a race in the belief that we are somehow insulated uh, from any type of negative impact or isolated from those who are suffering at a greater rate than we are. When I started this journey over 30 years ago, my goal was to bring an enlightenment uh, to my people. My goal was to sit up and take the great works of some of the people who preceded me, who I looked up to, uh, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, which is the reason I got into the field of psychology and human behavior in the first place, Dr. Naeem Akbar, the person who inspired me through his own actions to further uh, dissect the Eurocentric idea of psychology and re restructure it uh, to fit the Afrocentric mind and Dr. Amos Wilson, uh, who I can't even go into any <laughs> real long uh, detail about just the massive impact he's had. Neely Fuller Jr. and Dr. Claude Anderson and so many more, Dr. Joy DeGru, so many more, Dr. Howard Stevenson from the University of Pennsylvania, so many that have laid the foundations and allowed me to stand on their shoulders with my research and my program development and the things that we have learned when it comes to african-american adolescent and young adult male violence the things we now understand about the uh, influence of social media on the mental health of young african-american girls well, girls in general but we're talking here about sweeping in front of our own front door we now have a situation where African-American girls ages 5 to 13 lead in that statistical category in suicides. We have a 49% spike in suicide among African-American males ages 14 uh, to 24. We have a significant increase in the ages of 25 to 40. And I can go on and on of the things that are going on and we are putting band-aids on bullet wounds and we are sitting up and having philosophical debates about athletics and celebrity gossip and those are the things that hit when we talk about the significant things when we talk about the things that have the capacity to change the trajectory of the black uh, population in this country uh, it's crickets it's barely engaged if it's anything over two minutes nobody has time for it we have literally been dumbed down and conditioned to consume small bits of information with no substance no context no true uh, capacity to grow if you noticed those who actually consistently follow me you have probably noticed that i've stopped asking people uh, for the most part, to donate. We're not interested. At least that's the behavior that we are exuding. The, the, we're, we're not interested in real true work. We'll like something uh, if it's a flash. We love memes. Why? Because they're short and they're quick. We can read it and we can click it. We don't want to engage anything of any substance. We don't want 
to deal with the true issues. We don't want to deal with the fact that the uh, leading cause, the leading cause of death for women ages 25 to 40, 24 to 44 is intimate partner homicide and the second leading cause of death we stretch that down to 15 for females black females 15 to 44 the second leading cause is intimate partner homicide and we don't want to talk about that we don't want to talk about um, the socioeconomic um, ills and woes that we have we don't want to talk about um, the in, the generation and the sense of entitlement of an entire generation that doesn't want to put in the work. We're responsible for creating that generation. We don't want to talk about uh, the corporate move on affordable housing to where all houses under the uh, $200, the 200000 the $250,000 range are now owned by corporate uh, entities and they're now being leased back so the starter home no longer exists for families trying to get their foot in the door and homes are an important part of laying the foundation for wealth building and we can go on and on and on these things I've shared over 5,000 videos over the last what 10 years uh, less actually less it's more videos than that but I know over the last five, seven years I've done close to 10,000 videos. I've written 28 books. Matter of fact, I just published book number 28 and released it this past Friday, Healed and Whole. That book is the culmination of what started uh, in the mid 90s with me doing research on uh, generational trauma, multi-generational trauma, and how we are passing it down, the discovery and exploration into the science of epigenetics and how it's influencing our health and our health outcomes, adverse childhood experiences. We've talked about that. We've created programs to reduce African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. But where's the support? And I see this across the board. It's not just with the Odyssey Project and the Black Voice. It's not just with Dr. Rick Wallace. It's Anyone with any true significant anchor in doing the community is finding hard to get traction and get support. We'll we'll jump on board with the shiny stuff, but the shiny stuff isn't what's doing the work. It's the grassroots efforts. It's the people who are actually putting their hands on the problem that's doing the work. The shiny stuff, that's that's photo ops. That's distraction. That is to say, look, we do all this, we raise this money, and we do this and we put it in the community, but we don't we've removed the linchpin of effective of effective outcomes. And the linchpin of effective outcomes can be something so small that it's not uh, uh, obvious to the lay mind or the lay observer, but it's the thing that makes it work. And there's so many different things out there that they're doing that looks good on the surface that isn't producing the results. And we know it's not producing the results because we're seeing the outcomes. I'm going to challenge you. Support the work we do. If you believe in what I've been doing, and I've been doing it on social media now for, what, 14 years. I've uh, been doing it for 30 plus in life. I have given so much of myself and I will continue to do so because it's who I am. And I'm unapologetically who I am. Um, I go to work for my family. I go to work for my passion and my purpose. I go to work for my people and I will continue to do so. But at some point, we're going to have to holistically come together and observe what's happening. We don't have an agenda. We don't have a strategic plan. We can't even say what it is we want as a collective. We just know we're not happy. We just know that certain things are going on and they give us the person to be mad at and they tell us through media who we should be upset with, who we should cancel, who we should protest. And we are not able to sit down and truly scrutinize the things that are being placed in front of us because what? We haven't been conditioned to think critically. We haven't been conditioned to look beneath the surface. We haven't been conditioned to challenge the status quo. We haven't been conditioned to sit up and say, wait a minute, something isn't right, that, right with this. We haven't been conditioned to ask ourselves, how is it that we, vite, we, we vote at 
90 plus percent Democrat for the last 50 plus years, and we don't have nothing to show for it but empty promises and words and delays. And I look at how many of our people are out there actually making excuses. And no, I'm not in any way advocating uh, for the Republican Party. I'm advocating for us to start thinking of true strategies of how we're going to advance ourselves and stop believing that either party is going to do it for us. It's time for us to stop sitting around waiting on someone that, to do for us what we have the capacity to do for ourselves. You know, I don't have a problem talking about some of the things that go on in in, in, in the news, in the media, and, and, and with celebrities and with athletes, if it has a teaching point, if we can learn something for it. And I've learned that that's pretty much the only way that people will even pay attention is that you've got to use the shiny object. You've got to use the sensational thing. The desire to simply want to know isn't there for us, not at any real true level. We want to know the gossip. We want to know that we want the tea. We want all the stuff that's going on, but we don't want to really sit down and say, what will it take to win? We don't want that. We want to be able to blame somebody for not winning, but we don't want to really sit down and say, you know what? We're not operating as a conglomerate collective unit. We're not operating as an enclave. We're not functioning in the same way as other groups who are surpassing us in spaces that we once had because we don't want to sit up and actually be accountable to the collective. We love the individualized mindset. That's not my business. But we don't understand that in a social culture, there's a social accountability, there's a social responsibility to those within the social construct and the social culture. And when you don't function within the confines of that social construct with those social guidelines, you suffer from it. And individualism where people are doing whatever they want to do and demanding that people allow them to do it doesn't work because this isn't an individualized structure. Even those in other groups that may seem like they're moving individually, they are moving within the confines of how their construct is set up. Now, they have more lateral movement because they have more power. We don't have the luxury of going ham and going left and doing whatever we want to do because we don't have a structure that protects us. We don't have a structure of privilege. We don't have a structure that we can sit up and in any way negatively impact them as a whole. And that means we need to build something first that isolates us. We need to build something first that insulates us, that puts us in a place where we are less vulnerable to the many machinations and schemes that are being aimed at us to keep us at bay. We must become responsible in what we consume, in information and data, what music we listen to, what programs we watch on TV, what we read, what we engage on social media, what books we pick up to read, what videos we watch. We have a responsibility to the next generation and the generation after that to initiate a new idea of what it is it means to be black in this country what it means to be powerful in this country and what i'm trying to tell you is what dr claude anderson tried to tell you for years there isn't an infinite amount of time we are literally going to find ourselves caught up in a space of irrelevance and once we become irrelevant we become expendable we are being replaced right now by an influx of uh, immigrants coming in from the south border, almost unchecked, giving, being given rights in cities, being funded in cities, being given in, in the state of Illinois the right to become a peace officer 
the right to legally carry and bear arms, and so much more. You don't think that has a reason behind it? And then tell me, what is the plan of the black people to counter that? What is the agenda? What is the strategy? How are we going to withstand that? You can't outwork it. You can't go to work and outwork it because there's a transition of power taking place in the workforce. You've got to be ahead of it. And we aren't. We don't show any support. I've, I've been doing black man lead now for 20 years. And it works. Socializing young black men sets them up for success at an unbelievable rate compared to not, them not being socialized. And for so many young black males not to have black men, because we got, remember, we got 1.5 million black men that are absent. 1.3 of them are incarcerated. Let that hit. 1.3 are incarcerated. Others have checked out, going through some things. Some have been killed, but we are missing 1.5 million. Um, and it may have grown since the last time I ran numbers. But what, what does that mean? That means that we have to step in. We have to fill in. We have to be willing because whether they have fathers or not, whether they have male role models or not, they're going to be pushed into adulthood and they are not going to know how to respond. They're going to kill our daughters. They're going to rob our, our grocery stores and jack our cars and kill each other over blocks that don't even belong to them because we have failed. I, I can go on and on about the programs for abuse. We, we, we don't even want to talk about incest in the black community. We sweep that under the rug with an unbelievable ferocity we don't want to talk about it we want to approach it but we are damaging the future by not approaching and dealing with it and confronting it there are so many things that i have exposed and shared and written about and lectured on adverse childhood experiences we're setting them up for failure before they even get into kindergarten we are going to have to do something different. Look, in the um, description box of this video, you're going to find a couple of ways that you can give. I'm asking everybody that watches this video to give. I'm not telling you what to give. You give a dollar, you give a thousand, but we have got to start being accountable to programs that are trying to make a difference. It, it, it's amazing what we can blow money on. And I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. What I'm saying is there has to be something outside of what we are consuming with our money that ensures that we're in a position that where we can continue to enjoy the things we enjoy. Because what I'm telling you is that there will come a time that these things will not be there. This is a zero sum game we're playing economically. And at some point we are going to be on the worst end of the losing end. We're already on the losing end, but we are innate, inherent, natural consumers. And it's coming at a cost. Look, I'm going to get off, but I had to share that and I am challenging everybody who is watching this to give. You you determine what you want to give, but we have work to do. And judged by the number of people that approach for help and assistance. And the thing is, it's just been as of late, I we do what we can and what we can't, we sorry, we put people on waiting lists and we move accountable. I mean, but the support is literally nil. There are a couple of people, literally, that give monthly. And I say a couple, I mean a couple. They give monthly. You know, don't get me wrong. The likes, the shares, the comments, they're all welcome. But that doesn't get the job done. I don't need anybody to pay any of the bills for me or my businesses, but the 
cost that it takes to execute programs, that shouldn't only be on me. The cost that it takes to conduct research that provides ideas, solutions, theories, concepts, and more on ways that we can overcome some of the things we're dealing with from the psychological and social components to the economical components, um, all the things, man, we, the whole family structure is disintegrated. And we don't think that has any type of impact on the outcomes of what we're going to produce down the line. They know it does, and that's why they have literally contributed to the disintegration of the black family. And we are doing nothing to change it. I'm fighting with every ounce of me, and I will continue to fight until I breathe my last breath. But there's so much that could be done simply by resourcing programs that are committed to making things happen. Look, I'm on my way out. I just had to say that. You guys, thank you for lending me your time. Uh, hopefully you'll give. Hopefully you'll share this with others. Hopefully you'll be a part of the coming together and the meeting of the minds. We've got to get to a point where we're having think tanks and we really truly need that so badly on that note look I'm going to get ready to get out of here thank you for your time you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day yeah, yeah. they said I should give it I'm like I just ain't good Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be